grove lay dreaming in the sun of Southern California. Today, that orange grove is Hollywood, city of dreams for boys and girls all over the world. Some, but not all, of those dreams come true. It's a young city, gay, exciting, a challenge to ambitious youth. For here are made the pictures, which are shown on the screens of all the lands under the sun. Here are the studios, whose names have become famous. And within their walls, writers, directors, actors, aided by thousands of skilled craftsmen, work day and night in a world of make-believe to bring you romance and thrills. Escape from the humdrum cares of daily life. There are dream homes, some on picturesque boulevards, while others are tucked away in the hills in charming isolation. Then, too, there are luxurious swimming pools. But these things are the just rewards of hard-won success. There's the famed Hollywood Bowl, where one is inspired by great music and colorful ballets presented under the stars. On Hollywood Boulevard, pause for a moment at Hollywood and Vine. You're sure to see a face you remember from a picture of long ago. The radio studios attract thousands of visitors. There they may watch the broadcasts of their favorite stars. The Brown Derby is one of the landmarks of the city. On Sunset Boulevard, there's a section called The Strip, where one finds the restaurants and night provide relaxation for the hard-working people of the films. Vic Morton came to Hollywood and was given a leading role in a picture that seemed to be shown at Grauman's Chinese Theater, an indication of his success. contract to Majestic Studios, and there we find him one day as he's preparing to make his second picture. Never knew that I could sing, but here I am a making up a tune. I'm a little bit befuddled and bewildered. Could it be the moon? Never knew that I could sing. I never knew I even had a voice. But my heart is making music here inside me. 
And I have no choice All at once I find myself In a rosy mist Wonder if you feel this way When you've just been kissed I never sang a song for But suddenly I'm cooing like a dove Putting two and two together Makes me kind of think Maybe it's love What's the matter, Victor? You all tuck it out? <laughs> no, I like this better. Yeah, but what's that cameraman going to say if you don't match my voice? Nothing, because I have every lip movement down pat. Maybe so, but run over just once more for old bogey, will you? What do you think, honey? Should I do it for old Simon Legree? Yep, I think you better. You know, after looking at those press notices that say you wowed them in your first picture, you're going to have to be sensational in the next one if you want to top it. Sweetheart, you've convinced me. All set, Svengali. Yes, master. Let's go and just keep your eyes on this old satchel mouth of mine. Never knew that I could sing But here I am a-making up a tune I'm a little bit befuddled and... So it was a music lesson that made you forget about our luncheon date. 1.30. Oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry. I had no idea it was so late. Hmm, probably not. I've heard of women being completely carried away listening to crooners. Now hold everything, McDonald. Did you notice any lettering on the door before you barged in here? Yes, I seem to recall the words, no admittance. It's nice to know that you can read. Oh, you'd be surprised. Most newspaper men can. Then why didn't you stay out? I can answer that so that even you can understand. I was supposed to meet the woman I'm going to marry at the Derby at one o'clock. When she wasn't there, my nose for news told me that we'd be sitting around here somewhere swooning to your crooning. Just as simple as that. Jim, you're being rude. I'm always rude when I'm hungry. They're still holding my table at the Derby. Oh, come on, honey. Let's get out of this depressing place. Oh, don't forget, Vic. You've got to be in the still gallery at 2.30. Right. Ha-ha. <laughs> Masterful man, ain't he? Never mind the cracks. Suppose it was singing for me. I'd have fire for leaving that door unlocked. Now, wait a minute, Victor. You ain't gonna fire your voice. Are you, kid? Oh, brother, someday. I just don't see why you've got to spend so much time hanging around with that guy. I'm assigned to him. I cover everything he does in pictures. Stars are made by publicity. Now, you know that. Uh-huh. Stars are made by your eyes when you tell me you're crazy about me. How about making me some stars, baby? You uh, aren't by any chance jealous of Vic, are you? I'm not jealous. I just don't like him. You mean you don't even like his voice? Well, it's the only thing I do like about him. Well, at least that's something. Oh, let's not talk any more about him, honey. I want to enjoy my corned beef hash. And speaking of food, I'm going to take you to a new place this evening. Sorry, Jimmy, but I'm going to be busy tonight. Doing what? I have to be on the recording stage. With Vic Morton? With Vic, and a sound crew, electricians, and lots of other important people. Now, do you think I need any more chaperones? Listen, Tony, will you give me one good reason why you always have to sit in with that guy when he yodels? I am a businesswoman. Vic is my job. I know, but you don't have to put in so much overtime. Sometime, maybe you'll pencil me in for an evening. After all, a guy likes to see something he's gone with. We're not married yet. But I'll consider penciling you in for an evening, tomorrow night. That is, uh, if I don't have to. Now go on, eat your hash, will you? Telephone call for you, Miss Winter. Oh, thank you. Hello? Yes? I've got to see you right away, Tony. In my office, it's important. Oh, but I just started my lunch. Lunch will have to wait. We've got to talk and quick. Oh, what's the matter? You seem upset. Is anything wrong? Plenty. I want to get you to call the police. Police? I'll be right over. Now what? Vic wouldn't tell me what it was, but I have to rush right over to his office. Vic, I'm going along. No, I'm sorry, Jim. I don't think Vic would like it. Oh, he wouldn't, wouldn't he? Well, he's going to get me right along with you, whether he likes it or not.
What's the idea of bringing him here? Well, after all, you know, you did interrupt our lunch. Why's everybody looking so worried? Well, somebody say something. We're not talking in front of any newspaper man, Miss Wentworth. Would you mind waiting outside? I'm staying, Flesh Peddler. Jimmy, please. Nothing doing. Earlier, when you were talking to Tony, you mentioned something about the police. What's up? Are they looking for you? I don't want to have to get rough with you, young man. You get rough with me? Yeah. Sit down, Junior. I'm going to get the story from the police anyway, Victor. What is it? I'm not sure I'm going to tell the police. All right. I'll give you a newspaper man's promise that I won't print anything that isn't a case for the cops. Fair enough? What do you think? That's worked good, all right. But what's the whole thing about? This. The number is up, Fritz Morton. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I suppose that's funny to you. Why not? That's the oldest press agent gag in the world. You're new to the business, fella. You're going to have to dig up something better than that to get newspaper space today. Mr. McDonald, that letter came through the mail. What of it? Any phony can hire a student to send him a note. Wait a minute, fella. Don't you start calling Victor a phony or I'll punch you in the nose. Anytime, kid. I'm not the timid type. Come on, honey, let's reorder our lunch at the Derby. Just a minute now. Vic, is that note on the level? Absolutely. Vic, tell her about the missing picture. I'm not sure the picture has anything to do with this note. What picture are you talking about? Somebody stole the picture out of the office. Well, these pictures all seem to be of you. Anything wrong with that? That one that's missing, is that of you too? I'm not quite sure. It probably was. Maybe the cleaning woman's a fan of yours. Oh, I ought to sign you up as a comedian. No, thanks. I prefer to make an honest living. Come on, honey, I'm hungry. Wait. Then you think the missing picture had some connection with the death threat? Sure. Why? Well, it all adds up. Whoever sent the note stole the picture so they could study Vic's features. You tell that to the cops and they'll run you right out of the police station. Yeah, well, what's your angle on it, Mr. Smart Guy? The note was probably sent by some crank. All celebrities get them. Hey, if I were you, I'd ask the cleaning woman about it. Come on, Tony, let's go. I'm hungry. Wait a minute. Get me Lieutenant Armstrong at police headquarters. Homicide, Lieutenant Armstrong speaking. Oh, hello, Miss Wentworth. What's new in the picture business? Well, something very disconcerting, I'm afraid. Fitz Morton has just been sent a death threat through the mail. Uh, you don't say. Well, now let me tell you something, Miss Wentworth. This happens to be a very busy day in my life. Much too busy to be pestered by press agent stunts. A girl was found in a vacant lot last night, cut in two. Now, let me know when that crooner friend of yours really gets killed, and I'll be happy to be a servant. Well, what did my pal Armstrong have to say? He said we could go to lunch. Mr. Morton, I know which picture was stolen. It was the one Why don't you stop trying to be helpful and get after that stack of fan mail I gave you to answer? But I thought... I'll that... do the thinking in this office. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Martin. Good evening, Miss Wentworth. Good evening, Dave. Oh, good evening. Hey, where do you think you're going? In there. I'm a musician. Musician, go to stage A. Well, I just saw Mr. Morton go in. I'm supposed to play for him. Play for him on stage A. But I'm a great fan of his. All I want to do is get his autograph. Stage A. If no one calls for this in 30 days, it's yours. Hey, you. What are you doing here? Just wheel the prop box on the stage. We'll be ready in the morning. No one's supposed to come on this set when I'm recording. You know that. I'm sorry, Mr. Morton. I didn't mean any harm. Don't argue. Get out. I think let's try a take. Okay. It's in five flats now, and you start that course as a slightly part of the finish. Yeah. Uh, we're ready any time you are, genius. Okay, let's cut a record. Quiet, everybody. You ready on stage B? All set and waiting. Ready, Dave. Never know. 
how just the thought of you set me aglow. You're much too wonderful, too wonderful to be. Those eyes of yours, those skies of yours, oh, what they do to me. This love I have for you, it just can't miss. I'm more in love with you each time we kiss. To me you're everything, my dream of dreams come true. Darling, I'm so in love with you. Nice, Thank you. Now, Vic, we'll see what you can do with the playback. Right. Okay, stay, Jay. Let's hear that record. I'm so in love with you. You never cut, know. Cut. Don't worry, Vic. It's all right. Say, Jay, put that record on again. Yes, sir. night, sweetheart. I was all nerves, you know, jumpy. So I ate a couple of stalks of celery, still jumpy. So I decided to drive by and take you home. Jimmy, you're a fool, but a nice one. To coin a phrase, home, James. sit here and conjure up pictures of what's going on around each little cluster of lights. Lovers holding hands, kids raiding ice boxes, people making plans. Hold up guys frisking victims, robbers opening safes, coppers an assortment of pinches, suckers getting clipped in night spots. Are you such a cynic? I'm not a cynic, I'm a newspaper. I'm interested in those things. How'd the recordings go tonight? Just fine. Bogey's got a swell voice, hasn't he? Yes, he has. What did you say? Bogey's got a great voice. I saw him dubbing it for your friend Victor tonight. You were on recording stage? Yeah, I saw the whole show. <laughs> oh, boy. Wait till my readers find out that the sensational new singing star, Vic Morton, can't 
even sing a note. Jimmy, you're not going to print that. Why not? It's hot news. I'll lose my job. Are you sure? I'm positive. Good. I've been trying to get you to be Mrs. McDonald for a long time. I think it's very unfair of us to maintain two apartments with the housing situation the way it is. If you print that story, you can just check me out of your life permanently. You are crazy about that yodel, aren't you? You know I'm not. No, I don't. And I think you'll be mighty small if you, if you knock his career in the head just when it's getting started. Well, it's a phony career, and I don't like phonies. Okay, okay. So Bogey is doubling his voice. What of it? It's been done before. Well, you've got ghostwriters in your business. It's not hurting anybody, and the public is being... Fooled. Fooled. Entertained. That's what I said, entertained. Oh, Jimmy, please. Just let him get a couple of pictures under his belt. The story will be just as big then, and by that time, you'll be so firmly established, it won't hurt him. Please, Jimmy. And what happened does get those pictures under his belt? Do we or do we not put our furniture together? You're a hard man, Jimmy. comes in just as you take the girl in your arms. Now, you don't know that you're playing with fire, so you take it all very wide-eyed and innocent. Then when he gets tough, well, you get nasty too, you understand? Sure. Got your gun all set? Not yet. Well, props, the gun. Here you are. Thanks. Ready any time you are, sir. All right, let's take it. First team in, Mr. Morton, Mr. Fairchild, Mr. Long, places, please. All right. All right, quiet, everybody. This is picture. Okay, action. Let's not waste time on ancient music, darling. We've got things to talk about. I'm not sure I want to talk. I'm not so sure you should even be here. Why are you so elusive, Lana? You know I'm crazy about you. I feel the same way about you. Oh, there's so many things you don't know about me. Nothing that could make any difference. Believe me, darling. I wouldn't be so sure, Kruner. Who are you? Go ahead and tell him who I am, baby. What's the matter? Can't you talk? You used a lot of pretty words when you were telling me this guy didn't mean anything to you. Now hold everything, whoever you are. The name's not whoever you are, pretty boy. It's Trigger Malone. Seems kind of a shame to break up such a pretty room. I guess I'll have to do it. Move over there so I won't break that mirror behind you. I'm kind of superstitious. Trigger, don't! What are you laughing at, pretty boy? That name of yours. Can't be Trigger. Trigger's a horse. That's a very funny crack. Too bad you won't be around to make any more of them. Cut! Cut! something wrong? Let me see that gun. Look at that mirror. Those are bullet holes. Well, these cartridges are the real McCoy. Dick, I gave you my word of honor. I didn't know anything about it. Lucky for you, this guy's aim was bad. You sort of convinced people that threatening letter wasn't the work of a crank. Be sure and tell that to Armstrong. I certainly will. Where's that prop, ma'am? Cut. Front and center. Yes, sir. How did these real bullets get in this gun? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Hendricks. I loaded that gun with blanks. When? Last night, just before I wheeled the prop truck on the stage. Did you see anybody fooling around the prop truck when we were lighting up? No, sir. You better call the police. Oh, Dick, call headquarters. And lock those doors, don't let anybody out. The police will want to ask you a lot of questions. Let them ask. Why should I want to get Mr. Morton killed? There weren't a lot of people I can think of.
For the life of me, I can't understand why you turned that property man loose. It's stupid. I'm very stupid on occasion, especially when I pick up a guy who has a perfect record. As a prop man, he's never made a mistake. Any new suspects, Lieutenant? No, not a one. And we've questioned everybody that was on the stage when it happened. But maybe this would-be killer will try again. You're trying to be funny. Well, anyway, you got some swell publicity out of it. There's one thing I like about you, Conley. You're an agent and you always talk like one. Now, oh, boys, boys, please. Well, the publicity didn't hurt him and he did it. You can get a lot of swell publicity out of a funeral, too. But Vic ain't hankering to get it that way. Are oh, you, son? Not if I can help it. Mr. Morton, I'm scared. What's the matter with you, Sally? Well, this just came in the mail and the address is printed just like the other one. What is it? Another death threat? Yes. Let's have it. Next time we won't miss. It won't be long now. Let's see the envelope it came in. Anything outstanding about the envelope, Danny? Yeah. Yeah, there's only one particular organization that carries this type of envelope. Any United States Post Office. Well, that narrows it down to only 140 million people. All right, places, everybody. Hurry right up, make it snappy, you lovely people. Now remember, Vic. You don't spot her in the audience till the end of your song. Then when you do see her, you take it big, but you manage to finish the number. Then you walk down to her table. That's where we'll cut. Are you sure you're feeling all right? Stop talking like an undertaker and let's get on with it. All set, Mr. Hendricks. Okay, get them quiet and we'll try a take. All right, quiet, everybody. And that goes for the visitors, too. Roll them. They're rolling. Speed. Let's have the playback. I turn it on, she won't look, she just won't be a pal. Done everything that's in the book, I just can't get that gal. I play it fast, I play it loose, she's in a high gun. Seeking company, why do I have to go for a gal who doesn't go for me? She says hello, but in a rush, I get a fast high pass. Instead of love, I get the brush, just can't get that gal. With gals a dime a dozen, seeking company, why do I have to go for a gal? Who doesn't go for me? She says hello, but in a rush, I get a fast high pass. Instead of love, I get the brush. Just can't get that gal. Just can't get that gal. Uh, got a match, bud? Are you all right? Who fired that shot? That wasn't no shot. I just dropped one of these bulbs. I ought to have you fired for this. Take it up with the union, bub. Boy, you was as nervous as a kitten when that electrician dropped that bulb. Forget it, will you? Well, all right, all right. Somebody? Yes, indeed. I'm here to see Vic Morton. Does Mr. Morton know you? Why don't you ask him? Tell him Bill Powers is here. Okay, stay where you are. Yes? There's a Mr. Powers here to see you, Mr. Morton. Just a minute. Hiya, Vic, old boy. Hello, Bill. What kind of a hello is that when I've got big news for you? Come on in. How are you, Bogey? Solid, Bill. Sit down. Thanks. Vic? I've got you set for 13 straight weeks in a package deal at 2,500 bucks a week. Please, no fooling. That's right. Starting on the 15th. All I want from you now is two things. Your signature on the contract and the songs you're going to use on the first program. Songs? Sure. We've got you spotted for three numbers on every program. I'm not singing on any radio program. Not singing? That's right. When you came to me about this before, I thought you were talking about a dramatic part. Are you crazy? Who wants drama from a picture crew? Boy, what a deal I set up for you. A choice evening spot? Big name band, everything first cabin. Not interested. Not interested? Nope. Now, wait a minute, Vic. What's the matter with you? You look worried. I am. Bill Powers is in Vic's dressing room. 
Got a national hookup program with a sponsor all set. The deal would net Vic $2,500 a week. How can Vic take a radio program? He can't sing a note. I know. Well, what'd you let the guy on the stage for? Well, I just couldn't say no and let it go at that. We have other stars on the lot, you know. I thought I'd better tell you about it so you could think up a good story about why Vic turned down all that dough. Yeah. Look, Vic, there must be a reason for your turning down $2,500 a week. That's more money than you make in pictures. If someone else is bidding for you, why don't you say so? Perhaps we could even up the money. No one else is bidding. I've given you the only reason. I just don't consider radio the proper medium for my talents. That's a very high-sounding phrase. But if you don't mind my saying so, I think it's a phone. Don't call Vic a phone. I didn't ask you to come here. Now do me a favor and get out. I'm not leaving until I hear a better reason than you've given me. You're leaving right now. Take it easy, what? There's something screwy about this, and I'm going to find out just what it is. Tough turning down that kind of dough, ain't it? Yeah. Maybe we can figure out some way to fool them over the radio, too. Why don't you shut up? Oh, now, Victor, don't get your back up at old Bogey. I was just trying to help. Mr. Connolly, I'm a very patient man, but there must have been something in your file on Vic Morton that Powers wanted. What was it? You got the files, you know as much about it as I do. Still covering up, huh? Covering up what? I'm asking the questions. Why question me? The man was killed while ransacking my files. Even if I killed him, which I didn't, you couldn't prosecute me. You think so? I know so. Before you were discovered by pictures, you were a saxophone player, weren't you, Mr. Morton? You've been delving into my past, haven't you? Look, can't anybody give me an answer around here? All I get is questions. Were you or weren't you a saxophone tutor? I was. Is that anything to be ashamed of? Another question. You worked in the band with Morton, didn't you? Oh, yes, indeed. For eight long years. We never had mind, a never mind. That's little enough. breakaway band. I'll get back to you later. Yeah. You had a battle with Powers in your dressing room yesterday, didn't you? We had a little argument about a contract you wanted me to sign. Anything that might have prompted you to kill him? Yeah, maybe so. But you'd be surprised how many crimes I've solved by asking silly questions. For instance, I notice you tie knots in cigar wrappers. What? Just a habit, I guess. What of it? I found this one on the floor, not far from the body. That could 
be. I was in Mike's office yesterday afternoon. This your gun? Why, yes. Where did you get it? One of my men picked it up in your office. By a strange coincidence, Powers was killed with a 38 caliber gun just like this one. By another strange coincidence, the gun had just been cleaned in oil. You did that right after you killed Powers, didn't you? He did not. I oiled up that gun myself yesterday. Yeah, why? Those six men getting letters from somebody saying they're going to kill him. I figured his gun ought to be in good working order. You can't pin this killing on Victor, mister. No? Uh-huh. I was with Vic last night in his apartment running over a song. What time did you get there? Around 8 o'clock. What time did you leave? About 1 o'clock in the morning. And Morton was all that time? Well, practically. What do you mean, practically? Well, I just happened to recollect. Uh, Vic got a phone call. He was out for a little while. How long? An hour, maybe a little bit longer. That gave you plenty of time to kill Powers. Probably. But it so happens I was with somebody during the time I was out. Who was it? A lady. It couldn't have been you, could it, Miss Wentworth? It certainly couldn't. Tony was with me. All evening? Yes, all evening. We wound up at the Brown Derby at 2.30 in the morning. Going up plans for our new house on the tablecloth. Don't tell me you've got the tablecloth. All right, Morton, let's have the name of the lady. No, I'm not going to have her mixed up in this. That's very noble of you. Maybe you'll change your mind after I book you on suspicion of murder. Don't be foolish, Vic. You've got too much at stake. Tell him. It's nothing doing. I'm a very reasonable guy, Morton. I'll make a deal with you. Take me to the lady. And if your alibi sounds like the real McCoy, I'll never word about it to anybody. If you want to protect her, that's the way to do it. If I have to find her myself, she'll make plenty of headlines. All right, I'll take you to her. You gentlemen are familiar with the city limits. Just stay inside them. I may want to ask you more questions later. Danny, I've got an angle on this. You always have an angle. Come on, Morton. But, but Danny, Danny, listen. I'm hungry. Oh, but he ought to know about this. Look, it'll keep. I'm famished. Come on. Okay. Why not been when I was about to give Danny my angle on the case? Because you promised you wouldn't tip off the fact that Bogey is Vic's voice, remember? Yeah, but there's been a murder since I made you that promise. If you think I'm going to cover up on a killer, you're crazy. Vic killed Powers because he was too close to the truth. Powers might have been such a secret. Mr. Connolly's on the phone again. Did you tell him I wasn't in? Yes, but he wouldn't believe me. I never heard of such a distrustful man. And such language. Okay, I'll talk to him. Hello, Mike. What's the idea you hide now, Lord? Just a moment. You can close the door on your way out. Hmm. As a confidential secretary, I'm not very confidential, am I? Okay, Mike, go ahead. I suppose you know you've kept the whole company waiting to shoot since 9 o'clock this morning. I'm sorry, I'm not working today. Why not? Well, this murder business has me jittery. I'm in no mood to do any acting. Oh, so now you've got a mood. Well, get over to the studio quick. Don't forget we've got a contract to live up to and there's nothing in it about a mood. Well, that's true, but there are a lot of other things in it I don't like, including that 40% cut you're taking. Yeah? Well, let me tell you something. That contract is perfectly legal and it's got three more years to run. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe it won't run that long when my lawyer gets through picking out the loopholes. Loopholes or no loopholes. You're going to work out the three years if you want to keep out of trouble. Yeah? Yes. You were nothing when I picked you up. Try any funny business and you'll be less than that by the time I get through with you. I'll be at the studio in a half an hour, and you'd better be there. Majestic Studio, I'd like to talk to Pete Shelley. Having a little contract trouble with Vic? Who told you? Uh, how did you get in here? I just walked in. Your secretary seems to be out. Well, get this before I... Uh, Pete Shelley talking. Uh, hello, Pete. Never mind, I'll see you out at the studio in a short time. The studio? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you all about it out there. What's the idea on me? What's wrong with eavesdropping? I've been doing it ever since I was a cub reporter. As a matter of fact, 
Once I eavesdropped on the Night City editor and the operator. Next day, I was a full-fledged reporter. Oh, you funny man. What's the beat between you and Vic? Why should I tell you? Don't tell me. Well, you know how it is between agents and clients. Always battling. An agent works his heart out, and what does he get in return? Nothing but a lot of abuse. Seems to me I just heard you giving Vic a lot of abuse. Doesn't it scare you just a little bit to get rough with him? What are you talking about? Well, let's just say for the sake of argument that he did kill Powers. What's to prevent him from knocking you off? Now you're talking like a crazy man. Anything else on your mind? Yeah, yeah. Why did you turn down that radio contract that would have netted Vic 2500 a week? Look, McDonald, I don't know what you're driving at. But if you take my advice, you'll stick to straight reporting instead of trying to be a detective. In other words, quote, no comment, unquote. That's right, no comment. Quote. Well, there's no harm in trying. It couldn't be that your canary cannot warble a note. Majestic Studio. Let me pre chilling right away. Yes, hurry. Oh, Mr. Morton, it's another one. You'll die before the week is over. This is the end. What are you standing there for? Get Detective Armstrong on the phone. Remember me, Ms. Conley? McDonald, Evening Telegram. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Come in. Thanks. I hope you don't mind. Hmm, nice place. Mike must have been in the big chip. Look, I've told the police all I know about my husband's death. I have nothing to say to you. I think you do. I want to talk to you about Vic Morton. And yourself. You're sure you didn't see anybody hanging around the building last night? Not a soul, except Mr. Connolly, and he wasn't hanging around. He was dead. Yeah, we found that out. Where were you last night? Are you insinuating that I killed Mike? I'm not insinuating anything. I'm asking you where you were. Why pick on me? Because Connolly was killed by a shot fired at close range. All the windows in the office were closed and locked on the inside. That means someone he knew and trusted. Someone he let into the office himself did the killing. Mike knew a lot of people. Why should I want to kill my manager? It could be because of that hot argument you had with him yesterday over that contract when he threatened to ruin you. Is that on the level? Sure. I walked into Conley's office and they were going at it hot and heavy over the telephone. 
Connolly threatened to send him back to the small time. Better start talking. Okay, we did have an argument, but I didn't kill him. I have an alibi, a perfect one this time, not even an hour missing. With the same lady? No, with a different one. I was with Vic from early evening until midnight. Do you mind telling me what you were doing? Not at all. We were mapping out a publicity campaign. Vic was giving me his background. After that, we stopped for a soda at a drive-in, and then he took me home. Sounds like a very dull evening to me. It's quiet. Now look, folks, we're gonna be here until somebody opens up. I saw that little hand patting act he put on with you at the homicide office. What did it mean? Nothing. It was an ordeal for me. It was being sympathetic. Mm, simpatico, eh? That's a little hard to believe after the contract trouble he had with Mike. You're holding out something, Ms. Conley. What is it? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. This thing is beginning to add up. You know, sometimes a jealous husband gets himself killed instead of being the killer. You're wrong. My being with Vic that night was entirely innocent. Please believe me. Sure, sure. Well, thank you very much, Miss Conley. Goodbye. You've been a big help, Tony, and I want to thank you. Oh, I'm only too happy to do anything I can. Oh, Miss Wentworth, this is Dave Severani, United States Postal Inspection Service. How do you do? Hello, Miss Wentworth. We always work close with the postal authorities when threatening letters are involved. Dave here thought he'd like to ask you a couple of questions, in as much as you're very close to Dick Morton. Well, I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. Fine. Tell me, Miss Wentworth, can you think of any of Morton's acquaintances who wear pigskin gloves? Pigskin gloves? Yes. A man who makes a habit of wearing pigskin gloves. No, I, I can't think of anyone. What's the dope, Dave? By screening our mail pickup trucks, we've narrowed this thing down to three mailboxes in Huntington Park. The next letter the fellow mails, we'll grab them. What makes you think it's a man? There were no prints on the envelopes. No fingerprints, that's true. But we did get a glove print from the last one. The sender wears a size nine pigskin glove. That means a man dropped the letters. Well, what if he doesn't send another letter? The last one said this is the end. Killers who send warning notes get a kick out of torturing their intended victims. He'll probably send another one. Well, thank you very much, Miss Wentworth. I'll keep in touch with you, Dan. Right, Dave. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, Danny, my boy, I see you're still solving murders sitting on the back of your lap. It's quite a pleasure seeing you here, Miss Wentworth. You're going to be very interested in what I have to say. I can tell by the gleam in your eye you've been playing detective again. All right, let's have it. I got news for you. Ann Connolly and Vic Morton are very close friends. Is that all? Is that all? Don't you realize what that means, Danny? Conley found out about them. They had a battle in his office, so Vic shot him. Look, for your information, there is nothing phony about the relationship between Vic and Mrs. Conley. She was Vic's alibi for that missing hour when Powers was killed. Yeah, then why didn't you say something about it? Because it's none of you. Tony, will you tell the man the reason you made up that alibi is because of a misguided sense of loyalty? I shall tell him nothing of the kind. But I'll tell you plenty when I get you alone. All right. Maybe we'd better find a nice, quiet little spot and have at it, my darling. The sooner the better, my dear. Uh, look, Jimmy. Yeah? Have your fun playing copper, but don't get too serious about it. You might get in my way. That sounds like a threat, Danny, but it doesn't worry me. The way you're handling these murder cases, you wouldn't even see me if I did get around. And don't get me wrong, Danny. I like you. And when I do find the killer, I'm going to turn him over to you, just as a friendly gesture. Come on, you talk too hey. much. Why don't you make things easy for yourself? You confess sending the letters, 
Why did you kill Powers and Connolly? I told you I didn't kill them. And why'd you send the letters? I told you why I sent them. Tell me again. I got a short memory. Oh, that crooner's a mean guy. Always making it tough for little people like me and plenty of others. I just wanted to make him suffer a little, that's all. So you sent him the threatening notes? Yeah, what about it? You'll find out if you've been in federal prison for a while. I never knew I even had a boy But my heart is making music here inside me And I have no choice for a social call. Come on in. Thanks. Very nice, that song you were singing. You were sure tearing the pants off that number. What's the name of it? Ain't got a name. Something you cooked up yourself? Yeah, a long time ago. You mind if I sit down, or do you always entertain your guests standing up? Oh, sit down. Thanks. How about buying a guy a drink? How about buying two drinks? I'll have one with you. Good. Why are you snooping around here? Now, now, I wasn't snooping. I was just naturally curious when I saw this picture turn face backwards. Pretty good picture of you. That's Vic, isn't it? Yeah, that's Victor. Here's your drink. Thanks. That song you were singing, I'll bet that's the one that you and Vic used when you were playing One Night Stands. Man, you're so right. It used to be my big specialty. Every time I'd sing that tune, the boys and girls would stop dancing and gather around the bandstand just to listen. Well, here's the good old days and one night stands. Easy does it. So you really made them swoon when you were traveling the sticks, huh? No, that is for bow ties and swooning came in. But I did all right for a guy with a homely puss. <laughs> the chicks used to write me mash notes. No fooling. What about Vic? Did he get nice notes, too? Nah, he was just a sax tutor in those days. Only the singer got the spotlight. That was me. Funny how one man can change things, ain't it? Mr. Schilling happened to catch our band one night in Medicine Hat, Montana, and everything changed. First, I thought he was aiming to put me in the pictures. But it turned out it was Vic that he wanted. Well, Vic's a good-looking guy, ain't he? Yeah, he's a swell guy, too. So the old outfit busted up. Thanks. 
Why didn't you carry on without Vic if you were doing all right? Well, I owe Victor a lot. You know, well, one time in St. Louis, I got all jammed up about a dame. Guess I was out of my mind. Anyway, I was fixing to do something crazy. Victor stepped in and stopped me. You just can't turn a guy down and saves your life, so I'm here. So it was Schilling that discovered Vic. No wonder he hangs around him all the time. Why not? Victor's a valuable property. Only he ain't gonna be valuable long if these things don't stop happening to him. He's so jittery now, he's just this side of a nervous wreck. The first thing you know... Yeah, the first thing you know, we'll both be out of jobs. Vic would hate that, wouldn't he? He might even have to go back to sticks. Vic, go back? He's too proud. What about you? Who ever heard of a stooge being proud? But, Mr. McDonald, I don't know whether Mr. Morton would want you to come into his office when he's not here. From the things he said about you, I don't think he likes you very much. <laughs> don't worry, Sally. The feeling's mutual. What are you doing? Just measuring the wall for a new picture. See you later. But what'll I tell Mr. Morton? Don't tell him anything. Hello, darling. Hello. Still sore at me, aren't you? Why, of course not. I'm just crazy about people who try to convict an innocent man of murder. Glad you brought that up. I'm about to expose the real killer. That is, with some help from you and Danny Armstrong. You will help me, won't you? No, thank you. I don't want any part of your wild-eyed detective scheme. I suppose you've cooked up a new deal now to involve Vic. Oh, come on, honey. Let me in out of the cold, will you? I know I've made mistakes, but I want to marry you and make a lot more mistakes. You've got to learn how to forgive me sometime. Why not now? No. All right. I'll forgive you, you big lug. But you've got to promise me that you won't be jealous of Vic again. Would I be jealous of him and trying to save his life? Well, that's what I don't get. But you will when the murderer is captured. What I want you to do is authorize an announcement right now that Vic Morton, the crooner, is making his last singing picture. What? That he does nothing but dramatic parts from now on. Oh, but Jimmy, that's crazy. But he'll care if it traps the killer. I'll fix it with my city editor to give it big headlines. But Jimmy, I... Don't argue with a man who loves you, darling. I've got to get to Danny Armstrong right away and complete the plot. What do you say? Okay, I'll string along. That's smoke, baby. Okay, go ahead with the Russian. Say 
Miss Sally, you better get back to the office. Yes, sir. See if there's any more news from Miss Wentworth. Yes, sir. Well, that's the last day's rushes. Are you glad the picture's finished? I should say so. Say, by the way, do you know anything about this gag in the newspapers about me not making any more singing pictures? Well, Tony says it's Jimmy's idea. Yeah, he thinks that you're announcing to quit singing will trap the murderer into trying to you. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. So now I'm supposed to be a guinea pig. That guy gets the craziest ideas. Well, from what I understand, you haven't anything to worry about, Dick. The police will be outside. Sounds daffy to me. What good does it do me if they catch the killer and I end up with a bullet in me? Oh, don't worry, Vic. Tony said Jimmy's got to take care of everything. this is a complete waste of time. The score doesn't say so. Up to now, I get you stuck for 13 bucks. Mm, that helps. Because, you know, I'm not particularly interested in saving your life. Saving my life, that's ridiculous. Sure, it's ridiculous. But every now and then, I do something against my better judgment. Jen, hope I got you stuck for plenty. Start counting. Hello, bogey. Hello, Victor. What are you looking so gloomy about? Here, sit down and kibitz the game. This guy's beating my brains out. Kind of silly talking, Victor. What is this, a gag? I never pull gags, do I, Victor? If it isn't a gag, what is it? Do you remember what we used to say when we'd go for our high hot lick in the band? Somebody'd yell, it's murder, Jackson. This is double murder, Jackson. What are you trying to do, build your string up to four? That's right, mister. This where we go in. No, not yet. Wait until Jimmy gets the whole story out of it. The gun's loaded with blanks anyway. So you did kill Conley and Powers. What do you think? I'll tell you what I think. That is, if you've got some time. Go ahead and spot. This ought to be interesting to Vic. You're a smart man. Victor's a dog. Now listen, Bogey. Shut up. Go ahead, mister. All right. To begin with, you've hated Victor for a long time, right? I just said you're a smart man. You used to be a butt when you were playing with that jam band. Got to feeling powerful. Didn't like being a stooge after being a big shot. How does that sound? I couldn't have said it better, mister. Don't kid me. You couldn't have said it as well. Better get on with your saying. It's the last you're going to do. OK. You hadn't planned to commit murder until Vic started getting those death threats. You decided to kill Conley and make Vic appear the killer. Your chance came the night Vic went out and met Mrs. Conley. You went out yourself during that hour. Went to Conley's office, found Powers, and shot him. Why? I was sorry I killed Mr. Powers. I thought it was Conley. Well, it's nice to know that you're sorry. Have your fun, mister, but you better be quick. Thanks. When Vic and Conley had that big contract fight, you were sure that if you killed Conley, Vic would be blamed, right? He would have, too, if that girl of yours hadn't shot off her big mouth. My girl's mouth is not big. Pretty good blanks, ain't they? You switched them back. Yeah, I know all about switching bullets. Remember the prop box? Now you and Victor are going to get the rest of them. 
Nice shooting, Danny. Thanks. Don't mention it. I'd do the same for anybody. I got a radio station where I'm going. Tune in sometime. I'll give you a singing lesson. Come on. Oh, Jimmy, weren't you scared when you found out the gun was loaded with real bullets? Are you kidding? Me? Scared? 